Miata update. I'm just waiting on a couple parts for it. Hydro e-brake, oil cooler, a couple and fittings. I'll show you guys what I'm doing with that once those parts get here and you'll see how they work once I'm done. Since this was the first time of me doing like a repair video, let me know if you like it. Uh, please comment and subscribe if you did. Uh, let me know what you want to see. I can do more repair videos, any kind of how-to, anything you guys really want. I'm in a busy shop. We get tons of cars in and out. Or I can even get you involved in other projects that we have going on at any one time. Feel free to let me know, drop a comment, let me know what you'd like to see. Um, at Powers Auto Repair on Instagram, at Project Panty Dropper for my friend Joe. Um, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Hey, what's going on guys? So today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to show you how to do the water pump and clutch fan on a 2002 Dodge Dakota. We gotta get it off the ground and drain the coolant out of it. Alright, once you're underneath it, you just have to get to the little drain plug right there. Pull that out, it will drain the coolant into the pan cover. It's just a couple little push pins. Just crack that open. And then your coolant will start to flow out. Don't take this off until you have the drain plug plugs already draining. If you take it off before, coolant will just come pouring out of it. Alright, so to get this cover off, there's just one, two, three bolts. And then over here, there's a little push pin you have to pop out of the way. And a little, little tiny slit there you just have. Now is actually a perfect time to copy the belt routing diagram. So copying the belt routing diagram is pretty easy. You just kind of draw pulleys where you see them. So that's the alternator. Idler. AC compressor. What we're after. Water pump. And then underneath that is the crankshaft. And then the tensioner is over here. Ball line. So next thing up, I'm gonna show you how to get this off. That you might use for this or a clutch fan wrench, something like this. Just fits down over it. Now these typically you put on, you smack it with a hammer and it comes loose. That I use is this. Alright, it looks the same, but instead of having the half inch square in the end, it has this because this end of it actually clips into there and then you use an air hammer, something like this, to actually break the bolt loose. Sometimes these won't actually give you enough leverage or force to crack the nut loose. What you need to do is take this, get it seated on there, and then put this end in here. This is a 36 millimeter. If you're doing this by hand, it might take a little bit more effort some of these can get very, very tight. Yeah, it's just a 15 millimeter socket right on there. You turn it clockwise, it releases the tension, and you can just pull the button. Switching over to the head cam here so you guys can see a little bit better. This is still just a 15 millimeter bolt. Now that we have that out of the way, right, we can see what we're going for here. So we have one hose clamp here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bolts. So that hose clamp and that hose clamp, and then we pop this off and we should be able to slide this out. I'm gonna throw a bigger drip pan underneath the car because usually when you pop off a water pump on any vehicle, lots of water comes pouring out. And which sometimes getting these hoses loose can be a little bit more than you bargain for. They're often very, very tight up against something. I suggest getting a pick. Something like that, something you can slide up and under. Because once you're up and under the hose, like that, you can move this around. It'll help unstick it from whatever's next to it. Take penetrating oil, or spray PB Blaster, WD-40, Deep Creep, whatever your favorite is. Spray that in there, and that'll help loosen it up. And just push that up out of the way. Now we're just gonna take all these bolts out around it. I'm gonna try and remember where that one goes because it has a Torx in the middle of it. And these are all again 15 millimeter bolt. Now you don't have to use an air ratchet, you can use regular hand tools. As you 
can see we got two short bolts right here. Those go down on the bottom and then we have one, two, three, four long bolts. So those are on the outside. This one off with a wrench because it's a little hard to get it off of that. So I'm going to actually use the Torx bit. That is an e T50. T50 short guy goes right up on top as well. And that hose clamp. gonna take our trusty pick again get right on up in there now I'm not actually poking into the rubber I'm just moving the pick around around in between the rubber and the metal and then they'll come right off like that now that we've got this all loose take my big orange dead blow and just all right, see it move there we go now, the reason we're replacing this isn't because the water pump wasn't doing its job anymore, but maybe you'll be able to hear this. The actual bearing inside here that supports everything went bad. It was making a lot of noise inside the car. I'm going to clean up the old mating surface. See there how we have all this gasket material left on there? I want to clean that all up before I put the new one on so the new gasket seals correctly. If you don't have a little Rolock disc like this, you can use a little Scotch-Brite pad. It's basically the same material, but it's a pad that you have to move with your hand. Or you can use a gasket scraper. I prefer this just because I can clean the actual metal itself and remove the gasket. But whenever you're doing this, you don't want to just go full bore and just lay into it because you're actually going to gouge the metal or you're going to put unwanted marks in it. You want to just go real slow. Once you have all the old gasket material removed, ready to put on the new water pump. So you have to get the new gasket onto it. now. There's a couple different methods you could use to hold the gasket to this or to the block. What I do is I just take a little bit, just a little bit of RTV and just a couple different points throughout this just to hold it on. You want the gasket to do the sealing, not the RTV. Gasket seated on there, how you like it. But now the old gasket's on there, we're ready to stick it up onto here. Because I just lube this up with lots and lots of grease. So I can set this on there and hopefully I'll just be able to slide the new hose right up over top of that. And we got two bolts in there and look at that. We got that to go over perfectly first shot. I got a snuck a regular little hose clamp in. thing we have left to do before we're totally done reassembling is we have to swap that over so you get that I believe that is a 13 millimeter and then like that we're off and this can go in the trash if we're not reusing that if this this new guy I'll place that right over One thing I am going to do, just so if I ever have to take this off again in the future, I'm just going to add a little bit of anti-seize. Anti-seize is great stuff. It's a dab will do you. This is stuff, once you get it on something, it usually gets everywhere. Be sparing with it, if you can. And then we just spin this back on. tool I use to refill radiators. What it uses is it uses compressed air, basically creates the Venturi effect right here, sucks all the air out of the system. So everything in the heater core, all the lines, the radiator, all the air comes out. And then when I let go of this button back here, when I let go of this button, 
I flip this knob and it sucks the coin in. It fills up all the space completely. If you don't have this kind of tool, look up how to, you know, bleed a radiator. You leave the cap off, you let it run, it burps out the air, you add coins. You watch all the hoses collapse. Just flip the knob. And then once you're done or you have your radiator properly bled, you put the cap back on it and you're done.